Uh, in previous uh, lectures, we have uh, talked about uh, sliding mode control and uh, we learned that uh, there is uh, one disadvantage of sliding mode control that is it is associated with chattering problem and chattering is generally undesirable. And uh, fortunately, there are uh, some approaches which can be uh, utilized uh, to reduce or eliminate the chattering. And in today's lecture, uh, actually we shall study two different approaches for chattering reduction. And uh, in today's lecture, we are uh, we discuss the first approach for uh, chattering reduction. And uh, the first approach uh, to reduce the magnitude uh, of chattering is by reducing the magnitude of discontinuous part of the control action. You remember uh, this chattering in sliding mode control is due to this discontinuous controller. The control action is uh, discontinuous and uh, this causes chattering phenomena and larger is the magnitude of this discontinuous control action, larger will be the chattering effect. So we can reduce the magnitude of chattering by somehow reducing the magnitude of this discontinuous uh, controller. So how we can reduce the magnitude? So here is uh, one approach. Instead of using this controller, which is a discontinuous controller, we split it into two parts. The uh, a new control variable V, which we shall later learn that this is a dis discontinuous part plus some continuous function. And here uh, you, re you remember what is this A? A is uh, this parameter in this uh, sliding surface and uh, that is uh, always positive and it uh, determines the rate of convergence of system, system dynamics on the sliding surface. What is H hat? H hat is the nominal model or the known model, known part of this uh, nonlinear function and uh, G hat is the nominal value of this nonlinear function. So we have split the control control action into two parts uh, one part which is continuous part and another part which will be discontinuous part. So uh, uh, you remember that uh, in uh, while selecting this control law uh, we have ensured that this control law brings initial condition to the sliding surface and maintains the trajectories on the sliding surface. We have proved it. So now instead of using this control action, we are using a new control law and uh, we have to prove that this control law also brings any initial trajectory to the sliding surface and maintains the trajectories to the sliding surface. So how we can do that? We can follow exactly the same procedure at, as we had done earlier uh, while proving uh, this uh, controller. So how did we uh, prove it? Do you remember? We had uh, defined uh, the dynamics of the sliding surface. We had taken S dot and by uh, selecting a quadratic Lapinov function, we had uh, demonstrated that this control law ensures the asymptotic stability of S dot. That is, it brings all the trajectories to the uh, sliding surface s equal to 0. So we have to prove the same thing for this control law and for that purpose we follow the same uh, procedure. We, we Here is the sliding surface and we can take uh, the derivative of s uh, which is written over here s dot is equal to a x1 dot plus x2 dot and uh, x1 dot uh, can be substituted from here and x2 dot can also be substituted from this equation to get this expression uh, for uh, S dot. I omit the arguments uh, of uh, this H and G uh, for uh, simplicity. You know that this H is function of state variable X, G uh, is also some function of state variable X. Uh, now uh, we have used uh, this control action and we substitute it over here and that uh, is substituted 
the same control law u substituted from this equation over here and uh, furthermore uh, we can uh, rearrange it to write in this way we have collected this term a x2 and uh, this term uh, g divided by g hat into a over here multiplied by x2 uh, and likewise this term and the term which involves h hat uh, that is written over here and this last term g multiplied by v uh, this thing uh, is some another nonlinear function of state variables x so let's rename this thing and uh, we rename it to be equal to another uh, nonlinear function delta this thing uh, this long expression is simply renamed as delta and this term is written as it is over here so uh, i just uh, rewrite all this thing over here because uh, i need uh, this uh, space uh, for something else so here is uh, s dot the same equation uh, s dot is equal to delta plus gv is written over here and uh, also uh, delta is uh, this this expression is given a new name of delta so what's the next uh, step in the proof we need to define the candidate Lyapunov function uh, as we had done earlier for this proof as you remember we had the dynamics of s dot we had taken a candidate Lyapunov function computed its derivative along system trajectories and we had finally demonstrated that this v dot is negative definite that is s tends to zero as t approaches infinity so we have to follow we can follow all these steps in the same way for uh, this uh, expression for s dot as well or we can simply avoid uh, these steps by uh, by noting that this expression this expression s dot is uh, similar to the expression s dot over here the only difference is that uh, uh, this thing instead of this nonlinear function what is here is delta and instead of this control input u what is the control input v otherwise both the expressions are same so instead of uh, following all these steps we can simply say that uh, we can simply uh, write the expression for this control action v what was control action u over here this control action u over here we had proved it that was given by minus beta of x signum of s so by pros uh, by following the analogy uh, we see that uh, we can also take similar control action for these dynamics that is v is equal to minus beta of x signum of s uh, where beta of x that is uh, simply rho of x plus beta naught and beta naught is any positive constant what was rho rho for this particular uh, thing was given over here a x 2 plus h of x over g of x the difference will be uh, here um, uh, if you compare uh, this expression with uh, this expression so what do you think what should be rho of x right the rho should be delta of x uh, rho should be greater than or equal to absolute value of delta of x divided by g of x so by analogy here this was g of x so uh, g of x multiplied by u g of x multiplied by v so here comes g of x and instead of this ex expression over here a x2 plus h of x here is delta of x so here should be delta of x so we have simply uh, uh, demonstrated uh, we have simply followed the analogy and uh, computed the expression for this control action v and uh, otherwise you can of course uh, take a quadratic Lyapunov function 
follow all these steps to finally reach at this control action so what does this uh, the overall control is over here u is composed of two parts one part is over here and the second part we have also determined it and therefore the overall control that is given over here now it is composed of two parts a continuous part and a discontinuous part now this beta this beta is uh, different from this beta uh, here in this case beta was uh, given by this expression with rho and upper bound on this term and here this uh, beta uh, is given by this expression with rho given by this upper bound is that clear sorry term that term ha huh. the question is why we have taken this control action in this way so actually we wanted to reduce the magnitude of this discontinuous controller so now what you see is that this rho is upper bound on this thing what is delta delta is given over here you see that this g what is g g is uh, some uh, uncertain uh, thing and g hat is its nominal value so you see that g and g hat will be closer to each other that means that this term over here is uh, closer to 1 and what is this difference this is a small term likewise this term over here h minus uh, something uh, some number closer to 1 multiplied by h hat this is also a small term that is this delta overall delta will be a smaller term and therefore upper bound on this expression will be smaller upper bound on this thing will be smaller means beta over here will be smaller and this discontinuous part of the control action will be smaller and hence the magnitude of the chattering uh, will be reduced uh, here this was upper bound on uh, uh, the uncertain term and these uncertain terms can be larger compared to that this thing which is a difference of the uncertain and the nominal model th th these terms are smaller and hence this upper bound is also smaller thereby reducing the uh, magnitude of this uh, uh, discontinuous part of the controller so uh, we have uh, just uh, demonstrated uh, that this control action will bring any initial trajectory to the sliding surface in a finite time and furthermore uh, this control action will maintain the trajectories on the sliding surface for future time and uh, you already remember on the sliding surface system is described by reduced order dynamics and the trajectories converge to the equilibrium point uh, on the sliding surface and uh, the magnitude of the discontinuous part is reduced hence the effect of chattering will be reduced so this is the first approach 